Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. What a Scripture reading today comes from Luke chapter 9, starting in verse 51. Reading in Jesus' name, because it's God's word, not mine. So, Luke 9, 51, reading in Jesus' name. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them and he went on to another village. He rents the reading of God's word. Today... Um, We are going to talk about our values of being intentional. That that this life that we live in following Christ and and walking after him, it's not an accidental thing. Like, oh, hey, how'd that happen? You know, but it's it's an intentional thing. And and we we see this example from, from God from the very beginning. He sets a plan of salvation. Boom, plan. You know, that's intentional. When Jesus was on earth, and just this text right here, he has his face set towards Jerusalem. He knows exactly what the plan is. The plan for Jesus is a plan of salvation. And that plan of salvation takes him through Jerusalem, the place where he would suffer and die in our place for us. And it's huge. So... As we think about being intentional as the church, that's part of what we get to do. Uh, We value living an intentional life. Being intentional isn't always easy. I mean, most of the time, what we are intentional about is we're intentional about ourselves. And doing what's best for us. That's most of the time what we're intentional about. And so when we look at our values and we look at all of them, then all of a sudden we start to kind of get a little, well, it gets a little scary. Okay? So let's let's review our our values a little bit. If you have your bolts and you can kind of look on the front and, and if your eyesight is good, you can see that, you know, that, that our values are, are about who we are, and, and that, that's really about Christ. Word of life, Word of Life Church, it's about Christ. It's about Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. We are, we are missional, and that means that, that God calls us, that we've been invited into his mission to reach the world with the message of salvation that only Jesus Christ forgives and saves for all of eternity. And then he, he invites us into that to share that message of salvation. I think God was crazy. You know, but this is his plan. To use us, his people, to share his message of salvation. And sometimes maybe that gets made clear when we kind of admit to, the, to ourselves, hey, if God could save me, if he could demonstrate his salvation through us, then, then maybe somebody will, will see that. Uh, we are relational. God created us to be in relationship. From the very, from the very beginning, when, when God created Adam 
and Eve, God created us to be in relationship. Our first relationship was with God. You know, and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus covers this really, really easy. What's the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all of your mind, with all your strength. Second commandment is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. We are relational because we were created to live in relationship. We are united. We are disciple makers. And, uh, and we got to hear about that for the last couple of weeks. I'm, I'm, I'm catching up online. And so if you, if you missed a couple of messages, maybe you can join me. Just catch, catch up on, on some of the messages online. And then today we're going to talk about being intentional, that things happen on purpose. That as I value, we value living this life in Christ on purpose. What does that look like? I was... Um, all right, confession. I was driving. Um, I was driving with someone, a young younger driver, and they you know, we're teaching something, and um, and you know, the clutch on the Mini Cooper can be a little sensitive, and so um, so the car stalled a couple of times. Nothing major. But somebody pulled up, like, right behind the bumper of the car and then honked. And then I very intentionally unclicked my seatbelt, turned around and said, Hey! (laughs) Driving here! And I realized, I'm not in Jersey anymore. And then I really realized I wasn't in Jersey anymore when the passenger in the truck just kind of said, because I said, hey, you know, she's just learning how to drive, you know, and then the passenger in the truck leaned out and said, oh, I'm sorry, man. And I'm like, I am not in Jersey. (laughs) You know, 10 days out on the East Coast, driving around New York and New Jersey. Whoo, I lost my mind. And I, I, I was like, I am so sorry. I got into a meeting later on that day and I had to confess my sins. And I'm like, I lost my temper there. I, I was being intentional. I was communicating clearly. I just didn't read the context extremely well. This was a great week, though. It was a fabulous week. And this week, during the week, I got to, I got to see this great car drive past the parking lot a couple of times. It's a beautiful Audi R8. And as he, was, as he was pulling past one time, I was just getting ready to pull out. And so I, so I did something intentional. I followed him. <laughs> I did. I, fo- I followed him and I, you know, and I pull, pulled in and he, he pulled in up, up here a little ways because he took an unusual turn. I'm like, What's he got? where's he going? And I followed him. I pulled in after he parked his car. And I just said, I just pulled up and I just said, hey, man, that's a beautiful car. How's it drive? And he's like, you got a minute? And I said, yeah. And he says, it's actually a really great story. I said, great. He said, I was out of the car show with my son, and, um, and we were looking at, at all these expensive cars. And I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah. I was at this car show with my son, and my son, uh, you know, and, and I said, one of these days, I'm just going to do something crazy. I'm just going to lay it down, you know, like half of your inheritance and buy one of these cars. <laughs> his son's about 30, and his son says something absolutely awesome. He says, well, Dad, who do you want to drive the car more? You or me? He's kind of getting to that, you know, he's getting, getting a little, you know, to that, towards that age. And um, he went home from the car show and his, his wife said almost the exact same thing. Well, if you keep saying someday you're going to do it and someday you're going to do it and someday you're going to do it at your age, you might want to think about making someday today. And so he did. He went out and bought his dream car, an Audi R8. I'm like, that is a great story. That's just, I love hearing stories like that. He, he turned to me and he says, you want to drive it? <laughs> I said, yeah. He's like, you got a couple of minutes? I'm like, yeah. And he said, let's go for a ride. 
car is worth almost $200,000. And it was great. <laughs> I got to tell you, I have never driven a car like that. We got out of the car after a fabulous drive. And he turns to me and he says, now you've got a great story to tell. And I just kept thanking him and he said, no, I'll thank you. He said, one of the best things about owning this car is the opportunity to share it. Thank you for letting me share it with you. That was a car. How much more, how much more of a privilege is it for us to have the opportunity to share the message of salvation, to share Jesus Christ? Let me tell you, if you think driving an amazing sports car is a good story, wait till you, sell, wait till you share the story of Jesus Christ and what he's done. That, that's a great story. Got your Bibles with you? If you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to Mark chapter 2. Let's look at an even better story. I love this story. Mark chapter, chapter 2, starting in verse 1. If you have your Bibles, that's cool. If you don't, it's up here. If you need a Bible, if anybody needs a Bible, let me know. We've got some Bibles, okay? Mark chapter 2, starting in verse 1, reading in Jesus' name. And when he, that's Jesus, returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. And, and many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even at the door. And he was preaching the word to them, and, and they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, paralytic Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the scribes who were sitting there, they were questioning in their hearts, why does this man speak like this? He, he's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately, Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they were questioning within themselves, he said to them, why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise, take up your bed and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. Here ends the reading of God's word. I love Jesus. Jesus does things differently, and, and, and he seems to have this, all, he also has the ability to do it differently for different people. Some people get healed privately, some people get healed publicly, some people get, you know, you know, get fed, and some people don't, and some people get, you know, uh, have to go to the temple to show themselves to the priests, and some people, you know, just get to go home. Some people he says, hey, go tell everybody in the, you know, the Decapolis. And some people he says, hey, let's keep this on the down low. Let's keep it quiet. Jesus comes home to a full house. The place is packed. Standing room only, and you can't even get in the door. But four guys are super intentional. I have no idea how far they walked with their friend. No idea. 
doesn't say in the text, there's nowhere recorded. And so we have no idea how far, but you know, you don't accidentally start carrying your friend around. Uh, you know, it, when, when someone's paralyzed, and, and, and we don't know how, what size he was, we just know that four guys carried him on his bed. That doesn't happen accidentally. It happens because everybody heard that Jesus was at home and four guys, four guys said, I'm bringing my friend to Jesus. Four guys. When they got there and the place was packed, they didn't say, oh, it's too bad. They didn't just like turn around and start walking home. They were even more intentional. Let's rip the roof off. Let's rip the roof. I wonder which one of the friends said that first. <laughs> like, I want that guy as my friend. <laughs> I want that guy as my friend because I'm telling you what, that's the kind of friend who's like, oh, no, 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 that's just a little barrier. We can take care of that. That's just a little problem. And he just needs some creative problem solving. Oh, we can't get in the front door? No problem. We'll make another entrance. And I love it. That's creative problem solving. They go up to the roof. They tear apart the roof. This is not, this is not like our roof. I mean, it would be a, be a bummer if somebody was tearing through this, you know. It's a thatch roof. It had to be recoded every year, and, you know, relayered on. Not super difficult. They didn't need like a, like a chainsaw or anything to bust it open. They just kind of rip off some of the you know, ceiling tiles and then you know, create some space and then, and then lower him down through the roof right in front of Jesus. So not only did one of the friends say, hey, I got a great idea. Let's rip the roof off. But one of the other friends might have, might have been able to say, let's, let's make sure that we do it in the right place. Okay. Right in front. Of, you know, that's awesome. And then Jesus, he did it intentionally. He looked up at them. He looked up at them. Four guys and their paralyzed friend. And he saw their faith. All of them. All of their faith. The plural there just covers all of them. The paralyzed guy, the four guys up on the, uh, on the ropes, lowering down the bed. He looks up at all of them. He sees their faith. And he says to the paralyzed guy, your sons are forgiven you. No objection from the paralyzed guy. Oh, excuse me. I, hang on, Jesus. I came to get healed. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, I'm paralyzed. No, um, no he, he didn't object. He didn't say, what I really need is, there was no negotiation there. But, uh, you know, he's getting lowered down. And, and Jesus knew exactly what he needed. Paralyzed guy needs exactly what we need. Forgiveness. Forgiveness that only the Lord can bring. And he needs, he needs to hear it. I lost my cool while I was driving. I confessed my sins. And Paul was gracious enough to proclaim forgiveness to me. I needed to hear it. Because I, I mess up. I do. We make mistakes. We need forgiveness. Jesus is also aware that there's a lot, some other needs out there, too, because, you know, he in his and this is another opportunity where we get to see that Jesus really is God. He knows that the scribes and the, the scribes and the Pharisees, they are they're questioning. They're like, who can do this? He, he can't do that. That's blasphemy. He's making himself like God. Like, that's not right. And then he just answers. He reads their hearts and he answers them. And he says, oh, hey, just so you know, just so you know that the son of man, that's his title for himself, can, has the authority from God to forgive sins, what's easier? Your sins are forgiven or get up, grab your bed, and head on home. And so he says to the guy, just 
so that everyone would know that Jesus can forgive sins. That's the whole reason for this miracle. So that everyone will know that Jesus forgives sins. He says to the guy, get up, take your bed and go on out and go home. Jesus forgives him first. Forgives. Gives them exactly what, what, what he needs. He needed forgiveness, but everybody else needed to know that Jesus forgives too. So while the forgiveness was for the paralyzed guy, there was a message there for everyone. Jesus forgives. But he's not done yet. Jesus heals. Jesus heals completely. The guy immediately is able to get up, grab his mat. There's no PT required, no, no, no physical therapy required, no, no appointments at the, you know, at the medical center to kind of like strengthen up muscles or any of that sort of business. Full healing right then. Get up, grab your mat. He's able to obviously, he's so strengthened by, his, by Jesus healing that he's able to just pick up his own bed. Formerly, he was getting carried by four guys. Now, he picks up his own bed. And then he says, go home. And he sends them home with a great story. Do you think he kept his mouth shut? What do you think? Two? Do you th I have to tell you. Is a huge gift for me. A friend of mine was over in Kenya, and she brought back a pound of coffee for me. Thank you, Emily, if you're watching. That's a great story. His life got changed, but not just his. The four, the four friends, their life got changed too. They don't have to carry him around anymore. All five of them have a whole great story to tell all sorts of people. Can you imagine what it was like walking home with that paralyzed guy who's not paralyzed anymore? Can you imagine how fast he must have been moving? Can you imagine what he was doing with those legs? Do you think he was just kind of like walking? Thanks, Jesus. I would say not. If he's got fully strengthened legs and he's got fully strengthened arms and he's able to carry his mat, and I wonder what the guy said. Do you think his friend said, hey, help, let me help him take mat? No, 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 no. I'm carrying the mat. I got the bed. He said carry the bed. I'm carrying the bed. He said go home. I'm going home. I wonder who was home when he got there. I wonder who was home when he got there. I wonder who he got to tell about how God had changed his life. Who's going to be home when you get home today? In your house or in your neighborhood. Maybe it's the neighbors across the street. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's somebody who stayed home today. Maybe it's somebody who wasn't feeling well. Maybe it's just somebody who didn't feel like getting up early for church. I don't know. None of this happens accidentally. Four friends, paralyzed guy, Jesus, they all lived intentionally. And Jesus is calling us to live intentionally too. Not just kind of hang around and wait for things to happen to us. Intentional. Receive the forgiveness that only Jesus can give. Are you believing in Jesus? If you're believing in Jesus, receive that forgiveness. Get your life changed as he heals you. Receive that, that life change as he, as he heals your life. I'm not sure what needs to be healed in your life. I'm not sure what's paralyzed. Pick it up and go home. 
Take the story with you. Take a great story of God's ability to change lives home with you. And who knows? And look intentionally. And I get it. We don't always want to be intentional when we're headed home. But home is bigger than just the house that you live in. It's the people that you bump into on the way. Who's stopping by Rademacher's to pick up lunch? Oh, you're not? Because we got lunch out here. <laughs> but when you're on your way home, those are the people on your way. Take the message of salvation with you. Be intentional. I get it. I was reading this this week, and I was thinking to myself, man, I, I got a couple of friends I wish were paralyzed. It would be a whole lot easier to bring them to Jesus that way. You know, if they could just strap them to the mat and we could all carry them in. Some of my friends don't want to hear the gospel, so it's a lot harder to get, share the gospel with them. It's a lot harder to bring them to Jesus. So, think intentionally this week, please. Pray intentionally this week. Receive what God is giving to you, forgiveness and healing. And pray about who you get to share it with when you're on your way home. Amen? Let's pray. God, you're amazing. And I just want to thank you and praise you for all that you're doing we could talk on and on about your greatness, Lord Jesus. Your divinity, your power, your knowledge. And you looked at those five guys and you knew exactly what they needed. You looked at the crowds and you knew exactly what they needed to hear. We need to hear the same thing, Lord that you forgive. And so we ask you, Lord God, help us to receive your forgiveness. Help us to receive your healing. And take your message of salvation intentionally. You've got, given us a great story to share. Pray, Lord God, that you would give us the Holy Spirit to give us courage and boldness to share your message of salvation without fear. It's in your name we pray, Lord Jesus, our Savior. Amen. <laughs> um, I want to read the chorus of the song we're going to sing to you guys first. Um, it says, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Um, and I think the intentionality that my dad was talking about is just, it's so beautiful, but it's also, it's really hard and it's daunting. And I think something we can do intentionally also is ask for help and just be aware, like, God is going to be there. God is going to show up. You don't have to worry about that part. It's, it's not about whether we ask him to or not. It's not about like, hey, did my invitation get there? Like, he's going to show up. He's going to do great things. And just being intentional about, hey, I want that. I want that presence. I want to be overcome by his presence I, because that's what we're made for. We're made for that relational aspect of God and that relational, that relationship. So you guys can stand and worship with
receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen? Before you go, I'm going to thank God for the food so that everybody who can stay and, and, uh, and send off the bank's family can, uh, can get going. So, you got Thank you for this food, the hands that prepared it. Thank you for the Banks family, and we're excited for them. We pray, Lord God, that uh, just bless this food to our bodies, bless our conversation. May everything we say and do be to your glory. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.